But this is one book that I've kind of come back to again, and again, and again. Something I bought a, a while ago. I think when it came out, 2017 maybe, by Ryan Holiday, um, formerly known of uh, The Obstacles Away, and he's got this amazing book too called Conspiracy, which I finished on audiobook, which kind of details the whole uh, Hulk Hogan v Gorka debacle that eventually um, sent Gorka down. But he's got this book called The Daily Stoic, which is um, 366 Meditations on Wis- Wisdom, Perseverance, and the Art of Living. Um, so it's, it's effectively like a daily philosophy um kind of handbook that you can kind of read um each day sort of like marked out there you see like the dates all marked out on there some bits i've highlighted so you kind of flick through the page okay on the screen there you flick through the page of the, of the corresponding date and then you kind of read the kind of philosophy that he's kind of extracted there usually start philosophy based on the works of uh seneca Epicedes, and marcus aurelius and um obviously january it being the kind of start of the new year and you trying to get things back in order and new resolution all that sort of stuff it's probably the strongest part of the book because i've kind of i basically highlighted literally every other page of it right and today um was something that kind of um today is something that kind of resonated a lot to me um today's passage so i'm really quickly read this in the daily stoic on january 15th and i'll talk a little bit about it so on january 15th um the title of this is peace is peace is in staying the course right <clears throat> and this is a quote from seneca right and it says uh tranquility can be grasped except by those can't be grasped except by those who reached an unwavering and firm power of judgment the rest constantly fall and rise in their decisions wavering in a state of alternative alternately rejecting and accepting things what is the course of this back and forth um, it's because nothing is clear and they rely on the most uncertain guide common opinion and uh, the and the, the the section continues with Ryan Sen- uh, Ryan Holiday's um, commentary. It says here, in Seneca's essay on tranquility, he uses the Greek word um, euph- euphemia, which defines as believing in yourself and trusting that you are on the right path, not being in doubt by following the myriad of footsteps um, of those wandering in every directions. It is in this state of mind he says that produces tranquility. Clarity of vision allows us to have this belief. That's not to say that we're always going to be 100% certain of everything or that we should be. Rather, it's that we rest assured that we're heading generally in the right direction, that we don't convey, that we don't constantly compare ourselves with others and change our mind every three seconds based on new information. Instead, tranquility and peace are found in identifying our path and in sticking to it, staying the course and making adjustments here and there naturally by ignoring the distractions and sirens um, who beckon us towards them. And this is something that kind of resonated a lot with me um, over the last few days because obviously, you know, I've, I've had probably, an, I've had an interesting week in emails and stuff and replies back, but it just kind of got me thinking. I'm fastly approaching the one year anniversary of me uh, DJing at the Heathcote staff, my night called Labertides, which is coming up uh, again on Saturday. But just thinking about the whole like DJing journey outside of work and stuff and the things I've been doing, even with the podcast and whatever it may be. And just thinking about, you know, when I first kind of start, got started DJing, especially when I was doing nights in Dawson a few years ago, like five or six years ago, when that whole scene was kind of really bubbling up and I played quite a big role in, you know, in kind of shaping the sound, shaping the kind of parties that were going on around that time. Um, I didn't really have that many lofty goals, but the loftiest goal I might have had was to kind of become a, like a big part of that scene, right? To be like the kind of, you know, one of the main pillars and the rocks in that kind of scene. And that was something that I kind of eventually done and achieved. And I was very happy I did so. But then whilst I was going through that process, I also realized that I kind of was in love with DJing, right? I was in love with this idea of like uh, shaping the sonic landscape of a night out, right? Uh, being in charge of crafting the sound, uh, punters and bar owners and managers, whoever they may be, trusting you enough in order to play um, a, 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 a prolonged set during a, during a night out. And that was something that I always wanted to do, especially since I've been going to places like Berlin and Frankfurt and other places in the UK to go and club and party. I kind of fell in love with that whole culture, but I fell in love with the actual true essence of DJing, which kind of relied on up and coming DJs finding a residency somewhere in a local bar or pub and being able to kind of learn on a job and grow and develop over the years. Um, in the hope that you develop a unique sound, a unique taste, a unique point of direction, and that eventually people will trust you and they'll eventually want to keep coming back and back and back to the bar. And um, that's something I wanted to do. So in, in between that whole time of me kind of hanging out in Dawson and doing all that sort of stuff, I kind of took a, a bit of a, I wouldn't say it was a brave decision, but I did something that was, might have been counterintuitive because I'm not sure how brave it was, but I guess it was counterintuitive, right? Because I was, you know, I was very popular in that scene. I was, I was somebody that a lot of people knew. I knew a lot of people. 
I was attending loads of parties. I was going to all the gallery events and going to all the store launches and doing all the kind of networking things that people do nowadays. And I was doing that really well whilst maintaining my um, dignity, right? Not selling myself out, not pretending to be something else I'm not. And just kind of, you know, being the best version of, my, uh, of myself in front of other people and hoping that that kind of energy will kind of resonate with people and they want me around more. And that you've worked for a period of time. But then I noticed that I went into heading this direction of actually uh, trying to be a good DJ and developing to be an actual uh, paid professional DJ that was kind of hired to go and play at festivals and one of the, one of the famous bars and nightclubs all around the world, right? And I wanted to do that, but I wanted to do it in the kind of in the right way, in a way that I've kind of seen my uh, kind of you know forefathers and four si and four mothers, whatever they come came before me doing it, right? And that was by crafting it from the from the bottom all the way to the top get myself in the mud starting from residencies and that required me having to kind of pull away from that scene right and then kind of just earn my keep DJing in like shitty bars and pubs quote unquote and hoping that over a long period of time I'll be able to kind of slowly but surely work myself back up again um, and then I'll be able to kind of to command a, maybe a better fee I'll be able to command better selection of places to play at I'll be able to command better attention whatever it may be right that would kind of be the way to do it so I decided to pull myself away but it also coincided I'm not gonna I don't want to give myself too much credit I think it also coincided with my kind of star dimming a little bit in that scene too right because you know it's a trend it's kind of a hipster it's a hipster scene for the most part and if hits of them as told as anything, it's quite fleeting, right? Um, the whole point of being a hipster is that you jump on things from time to time, right? You're, one time you're all about this thing, next time you're all about this other thing. That's the whole point about being hipsters, right? But it's a it's collective movement. So naturally, with that collective movement, there's a there's an in, there's a influx of new people coming in all the time, right? Because they're discovering this new scene and saying, "Oh, wow, it's cool to hang out in Dawson. Wow, it's cool to do this. It's cool to put on your own party. Wow, it's cool to DJ them. It's cool to design a flyer." You know, there's things that are happening, and everyone's kind of going in. And then obviously, for the people that are like me, who's been in the scene for a while. Um, you then start to get other opportunities or you start to move on a little bit. So you kind of, you know, as we're going out, people are coming in. But if you're going to stay in there, you have to also know that you're competing with these new forms of energy, these new kids that are coming in with like this drive to really, really do something. And you're consistently have to be on top of things. And then I, I realized that once I was not interested in being that, and also my style was dimming anyway, because I was having to reprove myself in front of a whole new audience, um, it only made sense for me to kind of pull away. Now, again, I could have said, you know, that was a dent to my ego. I didn't feel like I was I was getting a credit I deserved, which is not true whatsoever. I don't really have that kind of sense of ego for myself. But instead of having that point of view, I decided to direct all that energy into trying to, you know, again, build my DJing career up from the ground up, from going to bars and pubs around the area, and then slowly but surely working my way up in the hope that my music, the way that I played, would kind of propel me forward, right? And I knew, of course, if ever come, if came a time for me to come on camera or to speak for myself, I knew I had the chops to do that, but I need to be able to kind of get that skill down. And of course, along the way, you know, as this, as this kind of passage says, you know, choosing your own path and just sticking with it and hoping that it's going to be okay in the end it's quite hard because you know when when you're especially when you're stuck when you're on social media platforms and you're constantly looking at what people are doing and i've mentioned before like it, as great as it is at all i think sometimes the whole mental health issues that are happening around the scene have a lot to do with this idea that you know social media does level the playing field somewhat it allows me and you to kind of share our designs share our ideas share what we're doing share our inspirations our motivations on social media but it also allows us to kind of compare ourselves to people that we shouldn't probably be comparing ourselves to because they're far ahead of us but on social media we all look the same right because we all got the same buttons to upload we all have the same page layout it's the same so we kind of get this false assumption that somehow we should be doing the thing that they're doing too. You get the FOMO, you get the envy, you get the jealousy, and all those things happen at the same time. So it's quite difficult probably to stay on your path if you're that way inclined. But of course, during that time as well, I subconsciously I decided to limit my time on social media. I hardly spend any time on Instagram, if at all. If I am on Instagram, it's, I'm just posting and dumping, right? And that's it. I don't really stay on it to communicate or to like browse on my discovery page. I don't do that whatsoever. And I'm using those tools as a way to kind of distribute my content and what I'm doing, but I'm not using it to kind of compare and contrast. So it kind of makes things easier. And I guess too, I just have that serenity of thought. I'm just kind of content with what I'm doing. I'm happy with the, I'm happy with going through the process. I'm kind of not ex 
attaching any expectation towards it. I'm not kind of like, this is a ride or die thing. And if that doesn't work out, oh my God, my whole world's going to be crushed. I'm just taking every day as it comes. And I think with that, of course, it's very testing and it takes a lot of time. And it's something that requires you to really humble yourself. You know, so one, one week you're playing in front of three people in a bar. Next week it's like full. Another week it's empty. Another week it's full. Another week it's empty. Another week it's empty, 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 empty. You have to consistently play in front of people who probably don't give a shit that you're there anyway, right? So it's not the most coolest place. You're not playing in, you're not doing a Carhartt launch event somewhere where you get free clothes and you get a canopy and you're playing in front of hipsters and shit. No, you're playing in front of everyday average folk who probably don't care you're there, but you're having to slowly but surely earn the right to play and then eventually you're going to get better. And I think I have got better. And one of the things that was quite warming was that this week I received quite a nice email from a former um, bar manager where I used to DJ who's now moved on to another bar and just I got an email at the blue just emailed me like hey I hope you're well duh, duh, duh. Um, just to let you know that I've moved to this new bar and we're actually um, thinking about introducing DJs to the bar so we wanted to kind of get you in if you're interested and she offered me a couple of dates with some more dates happening in the future and it's like wow do you know what I mean like and that kind of again if that didn't happen it, it still it wouldn't kind of bum me out but it's quite nice to get these little signs from the universe, whatever you may call it, and higher power, or whatever, letting you know that you're on the right path, that you're doing the right thing, that what you're doing is probably going to get you where you want to get to in the end. Again, it's a tiny thing. It's not like somebody emailed me and told me, oh, I actually wanted to play at the Bergheim right tomorrow, which would be fucking amazing. But it's just that recognition of like, you know, you're playing in a bar, in a pub in these places, and normally, you know, at that level... I'd, I'd kind of equate it to probably open mic level, right? It's probably a, you know, it's a flick of a coin if that person's going to be good or not. They might be complete garbage. They might actually um, chase punters away because I've seen it happen before where people will come into a, a fairly quiet pub. They'll have to DJ and they'll be playing fucking electro house from like 8 p.m. onwards. And it's like, hey, dudes, like, come on, just relax. Lower the volume a little bit. Play something that fits the tone of the, air, uh, of the space a little bit more and then go from there. So it's quite nice to hear um to kind of get a recognition especially from bar managers who are in that place all the time saying that you know what i'm in this space a lot eight more than eight hours a day but i think you are good at kind of playing for that kind of environment of that that kind of crowd and i have the opportunity potentially to be playing in uh, a bar in dawson so um that's going to be sorted out in the next few weeks so when i have details i'll announce that but it's interesting how it's all come back 360 right so i kind of you know if it purposely took myself out of the equation because i thought you know, I wanted to earn my keep the right way. I probably wasn't going to be the cool guy anymore. I had to accept that and then kind of did it the kind of from the ground up. And now, look, it's all come back around again. Now I'm back in that space where it, technically I wasn't deemed cool enough for that respect. But And even the cool enough thing, I think it's fine as well. If you want to be that socialite hipster person, I think it's perfectly fine. But you just have to understand the work that's involved in it. Uh, during my... Um, during my heyday, when I was like kind of one of the main people in that scene, I was out Thursday to Sunday every single week. Now, I don't know how I afforded it, to be honest, or whatever, but I was out every single day, Thursday to Sunday, continuously. Sometimes even Wednesdays, right? Depending if the alibi had karaoke or something right, during the week. Sometimes even, yeah, sometimes even, even on a Monday, you take a break Tuesday and you come back again on Thursday or Wednesday and Thursday. So... I was consistently out. I was consistently um, look adding people on Facebook, talking to people on social media, um, sharing stuff on social, funny stuff that you saw, articles that you read, commenting on other things. Like consistently around, like consistently, consistently, consistently around. It's it's tiring, man. It takes a lot out of you. Um, not on top of like you know making sure you look good, making sure you have all the right outfits, the correct thing. Again, it's not it's not something you do consciously, but when, once you're when you're in that kind of bubble of like hipster cool scene, you have to. There's things that you have to kind of that you subconsciously do or unconsciously do without realizing that are kind of done in the hope of kind of solidifying your position and kind of making sure that you're kind of one of the main people. People regard you as like you know one of the peers inside the group. Um, so that was quite tiring. And again, it's something that I don't think I could do now. I just don't have the patience to do it. And I just think as well, um, considering the amount of experience that I have, um, I just think that's not my role now. I think I need to free up the room for the kids coming up who are wanting to kind of make a name for themselves so they can kind of make their mistakes in their own safe spaces. And I can go off and do my thing. That's kind of how the evolution could be, right? Um, no one ever wants to be the 40-year-old um, the forty -year -old in a nightclub, right? Especially when you're in a nightclub full of other kids that are like under 21. It's all well and good being in a nightclub full of other 40, 35 and, and plus year olds, but trying to remain to be the cool guy in that sort of space is a bit cringy. I never wanted to be that guy. There's too many examples of that in the scene. That's something I didn't want to do, so... Um, yeah, just something I thought I'd share on the back of reading the Daily Stoic, you know, um, trust in the process, uh, stick to your own path um, and yeah, and hope and hope that that's going to get you where you want to get to.